if you drive a normal vehicle a little bit faster than the average person, you probably don't get noticed by police that much. But if you drive a flashy vehicle or a loud vehicle, you bring yourself a little bit more attention than the average motorist might. If you drive a flashy vehicle or a loud vehicle amongst a group of other flashy vehicles and loud vehicles, you get yourself a little bit more attention having been in part of a, a bigger group. Okay, this brings us to 2007, where my friends and I have gathered and we are planning on a group drive to a BMW show in New Hampshire. All of us had a variety of different BMWs. We met up. We're going to drive together in a big caravan. It's about a 45-minute or an hour drive. We're going to cruise to the show together. We're going to have a great day. As we begin our drive, we talk about, hey, we're, we're going to drive safely together. We all know each other. We're not going to do anything crazy. We have a driver's meeting beforehand where we talk about how we're not going to pass cars on both sides at the same time. We're going to try to avoid passing people on the right. We're not passing people in the breakdown lane. Let's let's act our age. Let's be safe. Let's not have people calling the police on us. So we make our way out on the highway. Things are going fine. Maybe 15, 20 minutes into this journey, we see the state police coming up behind us. We all start to move over. Now, the speed limit was probably 65. Maybe it was a 55. And we were probably doing 75, maybe 80. We're all in a single file line. We're all in the left lane. I can now see the police coming up behind our large group. We all start to move to the right. He comes up and he's passing all of us one at a time, kind of pointing to the right side of the road, at which point he gets in front of the lead car, and I might have been in the second or third car at the time, and he now stops in front of us, and we're all pulled over in the breakdown lane on the side of the highway. It's like a four-lane highway, and he's now got 40 of us pulled over in the breakdown lane, and he gets out of the car, and I can see it crystal clear because I'm in the front of the pack, and he comes up to the first car right behind him now, and he's very upset. He has a conversation with whomever it was that was in front. He's extremely angry. This is noticeable and audible from where I'm sitting. And I can see him taking this person's license and registration. And then he goes to car number two. The same thing occurs. Then he comes to my vehicle. We have the same conversation. It's, I need your license. I need your registration right now. I give him those documents. He says, you and your passenger, get out of the car, go stand on the grass. And then he proceeds to have the same conversation with about 37 other cars behind me, at which point we're now all standing on the side of the road. He finishes with the last car. He now walks whatever it was, a tenth of a mile back down the highway to where the group has assembled. And there's now 80 of us, because we've all have passengers with us, standing on the side of the highway. And he proceeds to lecture us in riot act tone about our driving techniques on the highway. And the gentleman who was in the front says, officer, it wasn't us. We weren't speeding. We're on our way to a show. You must have heard calls about another pack of speeding BMWs because we weren't driving the way that you are describing right now. And this officer says, you want me to believe that there's two packs of speeding BMWs because I've received so many 911 calls in the last half an hour about you guys that you're all going to jail today. And Peter says, no, it, it, it wasn't us. It, you have to believe me, there's another group of BMWs and you've got the wrong guys because we just simply were not driving in the way that you have described to us. And at this very moment, the other pack of speeding BMWs proceeds to pass us four lanes wide, 10 cars deep at triple digit speeds. And we're all going, it's them, it's them, they're right there. Well, this officer in the moment can't believe what's happening. He doesn't even know what to do. So he proceeds to now run from where we are back to his cruiser, get in the car and take off. And we're all standing there thinking, um, did he just leave with all of our licenses and all of our registrations? And now we're all standing here and, and we're watching him drive down the highway until the point that he's out of sight and he's gone. And we're like stuck not knowing what to do and time is passing and we're having conversations and it's been five minutes and it's been 10 minutes and now we're getting our camping chairs out of our trunks and we're setting up shop on the side of the highway and we're playing frisbee and 15 minutes goes by and 20 minutes goes by and about 30 minutes later we see him come back down the other side of the highway turn around pull over in front of us which is where he was in the first place get out of the car and come back over to us the lecture this time was a little bit different he was still very upset, but no longer upset with us. It was, 
here's what's going to happen. You're going to go down the highway and in about 10 miles, you're going to see one of your friends. He's the only person that I could catch up to today. He's going to jail. When you go by, you're going to see him on the side of the road and his car is getting towed. Please make sure you honk and wave and smile and say thank you. He's the one that's keeping all of you out of jail today. I don't even know who it was. After we got our licenses back via elementary school roll call, I got back into my E46 M3 and proceeded down the highway. And sure enough, about 10 miles later, I remember seeing a purple BMW on the back of a flatbed tow truck. And we just drove by and thought, not a good day for him. And we made our way to the car show and ended up having a great day. So the second time I was involved in a large group pullover was actually on a New England rally. This is an event where the bar for entry isn't just registration. We wanted to kind of keep the riffraff of anyone joining this out of our event and have a smaller, more tight-knit group of folks together and a higher caliber of people and cars in this event. So we say everyone who wants to participate has to have a minimum donation to charity. And it was either, you know, Dana-Farber Cancer Institute or something like St. Jude's Children's Hospital, where we said, okay, it's going to be 500 bucks per person, mandatory charity donation if you want to come. We're going to put stickers on our cars for the charity, stickers on our cars for our sponsors, and then we're going to go out on a multi-city, multi-day rally in the New England area. And during the rally, we were passing through the state of Maine, and we were going from small town to small town to small town. I was driving an S65 AMG, but we were with Ferraris and Porsches and other high-end cars, BMWs, Mercedes, Audis, etc. And in between these small towns in Maine, there's really nothing going on. It's, it's fields of corn, it's prairies, it's pretty much empty. So you can imagine between each town, the driving is a little bit more spirited. And then when you get inside these small towns, of course, there's speed limits, there's people, we're keeping the speeds down. If you're an observer of our group driving together in loud cars, in flashy cars, in cars that are covered with stickers, you would think, oh, these, these guys are racing through my city. You don't know that we're on a charity rally. So you see these loud, flashy cars, and you immediately, of course, call the police and say, there's race cars going through my town. Well, that's clearly what happened because at some point the police were notified and caught up to the back of our pack where there was a dark blue BMW M6 with straight pipes. As you can imagine, this V10 was quite loud and he ended up getting pulled over. In the police officer's mind, the police officer was attempting to pull all 20 or 25 of us over, but we didn't know this in the front of the group, so we just kept going because we don't know what's happening a quarter or a half mile behind us. The BMW pulled over as soon as the officer turned his lights on, and the rest of us just kept going on our merry way. Well, we got to the next town, no incident, passed that, drove through the next cornfield or so for five miles, got to the next town, repeat that several times over. Unbeknownst to us, law enforcement has called ahead because in their mind, we're running from the police, trying to evade being pulled over. So three or four towns later, they're waiting for us. We don't know this. We get to the next town, and to say that it was a scene out of the movies would be an understatement. These officers are coming at us from all directions. Cars are screeching sideways to a halt. Officers are jumping out of their cars. Guns are drawn. They're behind their doors shouting commands at us. Whoa, things have got very serious very quickly. The scene is very tense. There's police officers everywhere. It was like the officers in Maine had no action in their police careers, but today was the day we get to take our guns out. Okay, now they're coming up to the car. It's license and registration. Put your keys on your roof. Put your hands out the window. Very, very intense. In speaking with the officers, we understood after learning from them that there was a difference between a normal traffic stop and what they referred to as a felony stop. And we were getting the felony stop because they had thought we were running from the police. And this was perhaps the moment in their career where, hey, I might be able to shoot a street racer. But as it turns out, they were all very nice guys uh, after some conversations with them. And one of them even mentioned that he was retiring in the next couple of weeks and it was the only time in his police career he ever had a felony stop. We come to an explanation of, hey, we're on a charity rally. We're raising money for kids with cancer. We didn't understand what was happening. We would have all stopped had we known. Obviously, the person you pulled over stopped. We didn't know. Clearly, when you saw us, we were not speeding. 
and we're happy to talk to you now. And we were able to successfully de-escalate the situation, which resulted in not only none of us in our group getting tickets, but through our conversation and our persuasiveness, we also got local law enforcement to make a donation to the charity we were raising money for. I start most of my days browsing Auto Tempest for my next bad decision of a car, but did you know that supporting Auto Tempest can also help support all the great content that they support in the automotive YouTube world? I know that you've probably enjoyed a lot of videos that they supported and a lot of channels that they've been sponsoring for years, perhaps without even knowing it. So check them out now at the link in the description below. It is the most powerful way to shop for your next car because you'll see all the listings showing up in one search and you can search by any criteria that you want, but it also helps make automotive YouTube a much better place. So check them out now, autotempest.com, all the cars, one search.